Pete Calandra here, and on today's video, I'd like to show some ways you can use an iOS device to expand and enhance the functionality and sound palette of Yamaha keyboards. This works on the CP, YC, and Montage series. Today, though, I'll show it using the excellent Yamaha P515 digital piano. While the implementation is more basic on the P515 than on the other models, it's still incredibly useful. I'll be using an iPad Pro today and employing it in several ways. By using the Yamaha Smart Pianist app, you can tweak the sound of the instrument, control the amount of reverb, create layers and splits, and save your patches as registrations that can be quickly recalled. The amount of control and ease of use the app offers really enhances both the sound and the user experience. Another way to use the iPad is as a tone generator to expand the sound palette. What's great about this is that the sound from the iPad comes directly through the USB connection and out of the sound system of the piano with little to no latency. I'll use the Korg module app to add Steinway and alternate Rhodes piano sounds to play as well as using some of the orchestral sounds to layer in with the onboard piano sounds found in the P515. Another use of the iPad is with many of the amazing iOS modeled synth sounds. I'll use the ISEM from Artoria today and layer it in with the onboard P515 piano. Continuing on, I'll use the Moog Filtertron and Wisdom Music Geo Shred apps as solo sounds to play with the fingers of one hand on the screen of the iPad and use the other hand on the P515 to accompany my lead lines with piano sounds. Finally, using the iRealB app you can really feel like you are part of a rhythm section when practicing a jazz standard. Using an iOS device like this really expands both the sound palette of the instrument and my enjoyment of playing on it. If you like this video, give a thumbs up. For more content, please subscribe and to be notified, ring that bell. Thanks for watching and let's get right into it. So the first thing you have to do is use this camera connection kit and a regular USB cable and hook it into the USB on the back of the P515. There is another USB here and that is good for a USB stick and you could put that in there, a thumb drive, and then use the internal record to capture audio of your performance as a wave or I think an MP4, I'm not sure if it's MP3, but anyway, full fidelity versus uh, more reduced fidelity or resolution. And then you could take that and put it into your computer and master it in Pro Tools or something. So the Yamaha Smart Pianist app, and it connects to the instrument. And then right here, the screen on the P515 becomes active with what's going on on the iPad. So right now it's saying in communication. And so you can go here and you can select your voice and you get this screen here. And if I tap on there, it comes up with the internal sounds. So right now I've got it selected for piano. I've got CFX grand, which is a sound that you've heard. And the Bosendorfer, just by tapping on it. And you've heard all these sounds before. They're all very good. The CFX Grand sounds really great when you're wearing headphones plugged into the P515 because you get the binaural sound. It's really beautiful. And then there's a selection of electric pianos. There's the stage piano. That's really wet. I'll, we'll work on that in a minute. DX piano, just a bunch of pianos, organs, clavichord and vibraphone, harpsichords, different strings, and then basses and bass and cymbal. And then you've got these, this other category, XG sounds, right? And I'm not sure where they get these from, but these are things that you would find in like, let's say the Yamaha motif or something like that. And they're all just like general MIDI sounds, right? So you've got a bunch of pianos here. You've got some chromatic percussion. And 
I can play through a few of these, like the celeste is really nice. You could have a little bit more sustain on the sound. The Glock is really nice too. And the KSP vibe is nice. And they've got a couple of ethnic instruments like the Balimba. And log drums. Bunch of different organ sounds, right? Church organs, an accordion. Let's actually get out of here and let's go to and let's turn the reverb off. I'll show you this a little bit later. Okay, so let's done. Let's go back to our piano sound and let's pick our CFX grand. Now, with this, you can go right here and you could go into the piano room. And what's really cool about this is you can change where the piano sits. So right now it's in a recital hall. Right, you can click here and it goes into a concert hall. Now you have access to all of these things inside of the P515, but this is so much easier to use. And then if I click here, concert hall, depth, this is the amount of reverb versus the dry signal. So that's dry. And these are good sounding reverbs. Let's go to Cathedral. And make it really wet. All right, you can do some really beautiful stuff with that. And then you've got access to all of these other parameters with which to fine tune the sound. Right? You can change the fine tuning. You can bring it to a different pitch. So let's say I wanted, I was going to be really cool and do what everybody's doing now and go down to uh, 430. I'm not sure if I buy that 430 thing that's going around. And let's go back up to 440. VRM, this is virtual resonance modeling. I've got it on. Damper resonance. So let's, let's turn the reverb off and let's go to damper resonance now. And Right, you can hear much more overtones now. Right, much more of that resonance. I'm not sure if it's overtones. And you can fine tune that. This is really cool. This is the ringing of the open strings. And you can fine tune all of these things. And then you can actually change the tuning and the volume of each individual note on the instrument. It's really very powerful. You can play around with your lid position. So this is fully open, half open, and closed. Now, I would doubt it that they have actually sampled the piano in all these different lid positions. I think this is probably some sort of EQ.
What you can do, and let's go back to our environment and turn up the reverb a little bit. So once you've got this fine-tuned the way that you want it, you can click on this icon down here, and then you can save the current setting. So what I will do is... Save it. And then it's right here on your registration memory. So I've got a couple of things set up here. This is the one that I used for my opening performance. And you can see that when we go to the voice page, I've got three different settings. Well, I've got my main, which is my CFX grand. And then I layer on top of that or underneath that, I chose this new age pad and you get all these different choices, synth leads, all this stuff. Right. And those are, I think those are from, yes, the XG. And then on the left, I chose the warm pad from the SG. And what's really cool, if you look here on the keyboard, the main and the layer I have going from F below middle C all the way to the top of the keyboard. And on the left, going down from there, starting with the E uh, below middle C or the E above low C. It's just the pad. So down here, it's just my pad. And then up here, it's the New Age pad and the CFX Grand. And then you have a mixer right here where you can play around with the volume. So for example, if, well, let's leave this down. I can bring all these way down and then you'll see nothing is happening here, but my pad is happening. So if I bring this up, then in my right hand, there'll just be the layer. So that reminds me of the D50 Fantasia sound. And then here's my acoustic piano. If I just want to have a little bit of that layer, I can fine tune that. Now, you can further adjust this stuff if you go to the mixer here. Oh, not the mixer, I'm sorry. Um, up here. Okay, so you can adjust the panning. So on this one, I've got the, a little bit to the left, I've got my warm pad that's on the lower half of the keyboard. The piano's panned right in the center, and the layer is, the warm, the new age pad is all the way over on the right. I've got a cathedral and I've dialed in the amount of reverb for each one and the volume. And additionally, you can play around with the octave. So for example, if I wanted to make my new age pad be at the same pitch as the piano, let's turn the volume of that up. I wanted to make it two octaves lower. There we go. But I think one octave lower is really nice. And I've got the left, the, the warm pad up an octave. This way I can play some of these really full chords and not be too muddy. So if I just had it at the regular pitch, I'd be a little bit limited in terms of what I could do. And again, all the stuff, you store this right here. You can save it as a preset. You can easily call it up. So that's some of the expansion of the sound here. I've got another one I like called the Wet Stage Roads. Really dreamy.
Now, what I want to do is let's go back here and done, and let's go to our mixer and turn the volume all the way down on the piano so there's nothing happening. Now, where this takes another step above, and I think is really great, is that now the iPad becomes a sound module. And this is your controller. And very little, if any, no latency at all, I don't feel when I'm playing. So let me turn up, open up my music folder and let me open up Korg Module Pro. And what I've got set up here is a Scarby, right? Thomas Scarby, his EP88S, which is a really beautiful Rhodes sample, which is different than the one that's inside of the Yamaha. And now I can play this. And I've got my tremolo. Right, I can adjust the depth. Got reverb here, so I can turn that up. Turn that down. I've got different ones. I can have ping pong delay. Move that time up. Turn the depth up. I can use the Korg Natural Grand. So this is nice because this is a Steinway, I think, right? So now this gives us a Yamaha CFX, a Bosendorfer, and a Steinway. This one has a little bit too much attack and not enough sustain. Let's just see. No, that's the release after let go of the keys. Turn the highs down just a little bit. actually use one of the presets let's see let's try dark grand Now, there's all sorts of other sounds in here, right? Like you can buy packs. So I've got the uh, KA Pro. Let's try Symphonic Ensemble. One thing to notice is that the volume for the iPad is controlled here or on the output level of the program that you're working on or the app. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the volume on that down a little bit. And I'm going to go back to Smart Pianist and I'm going to turn up the volume on the CFX. And so now I've got module playing in the background with my CFX. I could turn this up more.
So you start to see some of the possibilities, right, of how cool this is. Let me turn off the module by quitting out of it. On this example, I've got the stage electric piano, and I called up the preset that has this being very wet. And if I go back over to here, I've got this soft saws pad on the ISEM from Artoria. Kind of cool. Any of these virtual instruments that you have, all of these apps work really well, and you're able to add on. It's almost like having another sound generator built right into the Yamaha because all the sound is coming through the USB cable into the system of the Yamaha and out through these speakers if I had them turned on or if you've got the audio outputs hooked up to uh, an amplifier or directly into Pro Tools like I do. It's coming directly in and there's no latency at all. It feels really clean to play. Now, other things you can do, right? So uh, let's see, let me go back to the smart pianist. So for this next one, I'm gonna pick our wet CFX. And then I'm gonna go to GeoShred and I've got a flute sound in here. And let's see what we've got. Again, you can use that, it's really cool. Let's go back and let's get out of GeoShred and we'll do one more thing. And let's go to voice and let's just call up our basic stage e-piano. And let's turn our reverb down Go to plate and turn our reverb down. All right, so now something that's really great for practicing is that you can open up an app like iReal B. And as you can see here, I've got uh, the chord progression for a very famous Latin jazz tune by one of my favorite musicians. and. I can practice along with this, so let's try this. change the feel. Let's do a samba. That's ah, better. So what's
what's happening when I'm playing this is that I feel like I'm in a rhythm section more than I do if I've if I'm practicing this on my acoustic piano and listening to this iPad with headphones on, but the acoustic piano doesn't have headphones on, or if I'm playing this through speakers, like I've got a little Bluetooth speaker, this I'm feeling really immersed in because I've got headphones on and everything's coming through the headphones. What I've shown you today just basically scratches the surface of all the kinds of things that you can do once you add an iOS device into the system with the P515 through the back USB port. If you've got any comments or questions about this, please leave them down below. I'll play you out now with something using just the CFX Grand. If you like this video, give a thumbs up for more content. Please subscribe and to be notified, ring that bell. I've been Pete Calandra. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.